Hi, I'm Dean DeMarzo from DeMarzo Recording, and today we're going to talk about how to use a compressor. Now, a compressor is one of the most important devices in your audio production toolkit. Just like EQ, you are going to use this on pretty much every song you produce. Uh, so it's really important we know what we're doing with all these controls here. Now, a compressor is a device that, when triggered by audio of a certain level, makes that audio quieter. That's all it does. Uh, it's in how we set up the compressor to get triggered by that audio that we can do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, this is where you get the idea that compressors can make sound punchier or louder or flatten things out. All kinds of crazy stuff you can do uh, with these simple controls if you know what we're doing. Uh, so today we're going to go over these controls one by one. We'll get to see a compressor in action a little bit over this drum loop I have here. Uh, we'll talk about some other practical applications of compression. So like I said, a compressor is a device that gets triggered by audio levels. Uh, and we've got a pretty dynamic little drum loop back here. Let me show you what that sounds like. Just a simple little drum groove, uh, but you can see it's pretty dynamic. We have these big loud drum hits and these really kind of quiet hi-hat hits. Uh, and you can see the big difference in the waveform there uh, of those two levels. Now, on the compressor, like I said, it gets triggered by audio levels. We get to set what level triggers the compressor uh, with the threshold knob. And you can see it's moving this line up here on the diagram. It's also moving this little notch on the meter to the left here. Uh, now that notch is exactly the level of audio that sets off the compressor. And you can see these drums are well over that notch. They peaked all the way up here. The hi-hats, on the other hand, are below it. That means the hi-hats are not setting off the compressor. They are not getting compressed. Uh, now, it's hard to hear or see what's going on uh, within uh, this, this uh, compressor here. So I'm actually gonna switch to another compressor plugin uh, for just a moment, just to show you what exactly I'm talking about when I mean uh, compressing the audio or reducing the volume. Uh, this is Alloy, which is made by Isotope. It's a really cool compressor, has a lot of amazing features, uh, but it looks really scary at first if you don't know what you're doing with it. So <laughs> I'll walk you through all the pieces in just a moment, but I'm just going to show you what I mean when I say uh, the audio is getting compressed. Take a look up here as you see uh, the waveform coming through. You can see these big transients flying through. Those are our big drum hits. Let's see what happens when we move the threshold below the top of those peaks. Notice how the line ducks down when one of those peaks come through. It doesn't duck down for the hi-hat, only for those big drum hits. That's because those big hits go above the threshold, while the hi-hat stays below. So next I want to talk about some of the other controls on the stock compressor. Uh, and these are controls that are common to almost every compressor out there. Uh, some compressors might have a little slight variation in them. Uh, and if you're following along in another DAW, you might see slightly different setups than this. We will go over the different types of compressors in just a moment, uh, but most of them follow these general guidelines. You have a threshold knob, uh, which, like I said, is the volume that gets set off by the compressor. Uh, in Alloy here, it's a little slider, but you can see it, it does the same exact thing. We also have what's called the ratio setting. Uh, and you can see on both of these, it's set to 3 to 1 right now. Now, what that means is... Uh, that is, that is how much the compressor is going to compress this signal. Uh, so right now our threshold's set at uh, 18.9. Uh, if it goes three decibels over that threshold, it's actually only going to come out one decibel over that threshold. It gets reduced by a third. And we can really crank that. We can do a 10 to 1 ratio, meaning it only goes one-tenth as far over that threshold. Now let's see what kind of effect changing the ratio has on this little line we were observing earlier, which shows how much it's being compressed. So here's a really low ratio. We're barely touching it at this point. And we can see a little bit of action there, lowering the volume. Let's try raising the ratio.
it's reducing the volume by so much more, keeping it really level. The other two most common controls on a compressor are the attack and release of the compressor, and those affect how quickly a compressor reacts to sound crossing that threshold. The attack is how long it takes for the compressor to kick in after audio crosses above the threshold, and the release is how long it takes for the compressor to release its grasp on the audio after it crosses below the threshold and we can use this to shape the sound passing through the compressor. Let's take a look at what a really fast attack looks like. I'm gonna cut this attack just about all the way down in isotope. And you can see that's pretty much a straight line going down as soon as that drum passes through. I hope you're also listening to this, as obviously we're making music here, not line art. So I want you to listen to the sound of that drum hit getting choked immediately. It doesn't even have time to hit. It, the compressor bites down as soon as that sound comes through. Now compare that with the sound of a really slow attack. We are gonna let that drum hit all the way through before the compressor hits and you'll see that in the line and you'll hear a really sharp attack because we're letting the compressor uh, wait a minute before it hits. So I'm gonna turn up the attack here. Now notice how the line ducks down after the main transient has hit and you can hear a really sharp attack. compared with the short attack on the compressor. It's almost like the beginning is getting chopped off how much it's getting reduced. Back to the long attack. Now release handles the other end of things. Release is how long it takes for the compressor to uh, release its grasp on the audio, like I said. Now I'm going to pull the release down. We'll see a really quick return to the center line as the transient passes through. Check this out. See how quickly it returns as I punch the release back up. It takes forever for it to get back to normal. Now take a listen to the effect on the audio this time. Uh, this is going to be a really quick release. We're going to let the sound come right back in after that transient hits and listen to how the, the uh, sustain of the drum just kind of breathes right back into the foreground. Compare that with a really long release, which takes much longer for the drum to get back to you. And the other knob that's found on just about every compressor is the gain knob, or the makeup knob sometimes called. Uh, it's the makeup gain, which lets you add back in some volume that you took out while compressing. Uh, and it is the easiest knob to abuse for newcomers uh, because louder things sound better to the human ear. Uh, it's really important if you're going to use the makeup gain, do your best to match your input meter to your output meter. So check this out. Now I'm not tricking myself into thinking that, oh, I made it louder so it sounds better. Now we're gonna listen to the difference between the compressed sound, uh, which is the volume over here, and the original sound. Make sure they're the same overall volume, we're just changing the sound with compression. So I'm gonna flip between the original signal, which will be bypassed, uh, and the uh, compressed signal, which is not bypassed. So here's the original. And compressed. Cool. Now, I did mention there are some other types of compressors out there uh, that yours might look a little bit different than the stock Pro Tools compressor. Uh, one really popular example of a different looking compressor is the 1176. Uh, this is the BF76, which is uh, made by Bomb Factory. 
Uh, I think this comes with Pro Tools. I bought Pro Tools so long ago, I don't remember. Uh, but this is a, uh, an 1176 clone, which there are a million of these out there. Um, and you can see the controls are just a little bit different. Instead of threshold and gain, we have input and output. Uh, now the input knob does the same thing as the threshold knob. Uh, it's just controlling, it's almost backwards. Uh, the more you pump into this input, the, the more audio is going to go above the set threshold in here. Uh, and you'll see this meter here start to tick down when that threshold's getting uh, crossed. So let's see what that looks like in action. All right, so the top of our snare hits are starting to catch that needle. Let's see what happens when we push a little further. Now you can see we're really moving the needle now that we've cranked up the input. Uh, the output is not going to affect this meter because this is just like the makeup gain knob that I talked about earlier. Uh, this affects, uh, this lets you add in volume after you've taken it out. So we're not going to worry about that just yet. We still have attack and release knobs, although on 1176, these knobs are a little bit funny. Uh, the fastest attack is actually all the way up at 7. Uh, so take a look at the really fast attack now. And the slowest attack is at 1. Uh, the release functions similarly, with the quickest release being here. And the slowest being at 1. So take a look at how long it takes for that needle to get back. This needle is showing how much gain reduction is being applied. Gain reduction is the, uh, the really technical term for compression how much gain is being reduced when audio passes through. The further this needle goes down, the more compression is being applied. Uh, and you can see we have a few options for ratio here. I can crank up the ratio by picking higher buttons on this. Uh, these are like little push buttons on the face of an 1176 if you've ever seen a real one in person. And uh, what's cool is the 1176 had a feature where you could kind of push in all four buttons at once and get this super compressed kind of sound, uh, which you can do on this one if you hold shift and click on the buttons. It's just absolutely squashing the sound right now. Uh, so that is the 1176 design. There's one other feature of compressors that we haven't talked about yet uh, that's really cool. It's called the sidechain. Uh, and this can be really useful, especially if you're producing EDM or sometimes hip-hop. Uh, it's a really cool feature, but it comes in handy in just about every genre once in a while. Basically, what a sidechain does is it allows you to uh, trigger a compressor using audio other than the audio you're compressing. So, for example, I've got this synth loop that I want to get triggered by the drum loop we've been working with. Uh, now, every DAW lets you set this up differently. Uh, in Pro Tools, I'm going to route audio from my drum uh, track here into a bus here called Drums L, uh, which I'm going to select on this end. I select the little key here uh, to show that it's being keyed by another track. It's being sidechained. And we're going to see our drum levels on our synth track here as I play this. To show you, here's the drum track we've been playing with. So let's see what that drum track does to our synth. Here's what it sounds like triggering it.
So you can get some really cool, dreamy, lo-fi sounds using this uh, when it's pushed to the extreme like this. Uh, a more practical example outside of EDM uh, would be ducking the bass guitar part a little bit every time the kick drum hits. Uh, that way they stay out of each other's way. They're not both fighting for the low frequencies. Uh, as we saw in the EQ video we did earlier, it's, it's a little tough when instruments occupy the same space in the frequency range. So using a sidechain compressor like this can be one way to get them out of the way of each other. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you want to download this Pro Tools session and these audio files here, you can click the link below for a free download so you can play with these yourself uh, and get a feel for how this compressor works. If you have any questions about compressors or audio production in general, please leave them below in the comments and I'll either get back to you there or maybe make a video about them in the future. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.